How to bring the stillness of deep sleep into now? That's what the whole thing seems to be all about. <laughs> this is again a question coming from mind that a thought, a desire that we can only be happy if there is complete stillness of the mind. But for whom stillness of mind is required, if you go into this question, it is only the mind asking the mind. Like we are giving this power to the thief on us to pick up the thief. If, if you just accept that whatever it is, restless mind, whatever the situation around us, accept everything in totality, the stillness will dawn on you in spite of everything. So the question arises that reading books or reading concepts, uh, we make a concept that unless the mind is like in deep sleep, we are not liberated or we are not happy. But why don't we just accept whatever the mind is? Why don't we behave first, then we want the mind to behave? What I'm trying to ask you is to surrender completely to the situation. Whatever the body we have been given, whatever mind we have been given, whatever the circumstances we have been given, just accept in totality. And that is why even in path of knowledge, path of jnana, devotion, bhakti, surrender is so important. Because otherwise, you know, it becomes an intellectual tussle. How to be uh, that still as in deep sleep. This is again your projection of your mind. And I'll tell you again, mind will never reach there. Because it's not the domain of the mind at all to be still. Mind is always restless. I call mind as a drunk, mad monkey. A monkey which is mad and also drunk. Completely lost. And that mind is right now asking, how can I be as still as in deep sleep? It will never be. And again comes the greatest of all mantras, keep quiet. So the mind is asking all these things, mind is having doubts, mind is getting restless. And you keep quiet. Just see your mind. Watch it. Have patience. Patience and perseverance is only in this. And not just for one minute or one hour or two hours of sitting in solitude. No. All the time. You interact with people. You attend parties. You go to work. You do household chores. You sit quietly. You take part in the entertainment um, of family or friends. If you want to avoid all those things and you can avoid, that's very good. That will help you more. Like it will give you more uh, progress in watching the mind. But anyway, whatever the situation we have been, let's accept it. And then keep watching the mind. Watching the mind will make it still, rather than obeying the mind, rather than controlling the mind, rather than even having a desire that mind, mind uh, 
I should have a stillness as deep sleep because this question is arising only from mind. Otherwise, if you see what we are made up of, we are made up of two things combined together. Those two things have to separate to be liberated, to be free forever. What are those two things? One thing we have borrowed from the world which is destructible. The second thing we have borrowed from the Supreme, uh, the one which is eternal, the God within us. Now two things have combined and made this human being which is made up of mind, body and Brahman, the Atma, the consciousness. Now the two things have come together. It's like there is energy which has come to something which is transient. And mind is part of the transient, not the eternal. So the mind-body complex and ego, intellect, all this is part, they are all gadgets of the transient, impermanent. You, you the true self, is permanent, eternal. And that is never involved, that is uninvolved. So anything which is having doubts is not you. Anything which wants to be somewhere is not you. You are there. You are always satisfied, contented, happy, joyful. Bliss radiates from you. And you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do any practice. You as self, you just have to realize what you are. And you are this pure self. Believe me, but the thing is that the mind creates doubts in your belief also. And we go with those doubts and we become restless. No, we don't, you as self can never be restless. You the one who believes in mind is restless. And who is that? That's what we try to find out in satsang, in contemplation, in inquiry. Who is that? But how would you try to find out who is that? By being aware, by being like a person who is on border and ready to fight and he is with full vigor and alertness. That alertness is needed, not dullness. And so is the reason that the tamasic mind or a ratsic mind finds so much difficulty in attaining the self, understanding the concept. And so all these different tools are applied. Your day-to-day -day activities, what you are doing with people around you, the food what you eat, the things what you do in the day, and your faith and your practice. Because the thing is that you keep jumping and and acting like ego who believes in the ma that you are body mind complex, but you are never body mind complex. All these questions, all these doubts, the one who wants to achieve, wants to reach, has to dissolve. And the simplest way to dissolve is to be what you are. Stay as uninvolved, unconcerned, witness to all what is happening in our daily life. Also, unconcerned, pure witness to whatever is happening to the mind and to the feelings. Unconcerned. Unconcerned, uninvolved witness will just watch. And then comes this mantra, keep quiet. Just keep quiet and just watch. Give peace a chance, just watch. Let mind is saying, oh, that's complete waste of time and I'm not getting moksha, I'm not getting liberated. 
because mind will never get liberated mind will never get moksha mind will dissolve mind will disappear mind will get calmness only when you are in calmness you have to mind will follow you you don't have to follow mind and that is why it is so important to do contemplation to look into what is mind what is me what is ego where is intellect what we need to do on the path of knowledge we don't have to do anything except being aware silent keep quiet and just watch whatever is unfolding without getting involved it is the simplest way but difficult because of our old habits we jump and we get into the mind and then talk from the mind look within sit with yourself pay attention to this pure awareness like a pure seeing or you can call it like i am ness in you the first principle which has made this bond with the mind body complex just watch from there just as an i am ness even when you are sitting alone you can watch when things are not that busy you can watch but slowly and gradually you will understand what i am talking about there is this stillness from where you watch your mind watch your body but if you keep asking me from the mind that how should i get into the restful state of deep sleep it is not achievable you have to leave this relationship with the mind be at the place from where you can watch the mind rather than be the mind and speak from mind this place is in all of us this place is of neutrality impersonal here there is no action or rather i should say this is the place of all the roles have been dropped we are no more acting as a person from this place this authenticity in you from here to a naive person who sits here it might look odd because old habits will try to pull him to act as he was doing before let's say before you were very interested to please people in different ways and crack jokes or you know try to please them with good food or something which your personality was demanding to do <coughs> and from here you notice the and the no substance in all those activities though they looked beautiful outwardly but there was no substance no gist in it and so all those things drops you might look very strange to others people might not, might not like you maybe people might think you are more egoistic they might think you are feeling very pricey about what you are because you are into some spirituality type of weird thing anything can happen they can even like you what i am trying to tell you is that stay at this authentic place which is completely impersonal neutral uninvolved 
it somehow happens that you move here by constant watching paying attention to this pure awareness and not getting involved in the mind game in the ego game how long you have to stay here eternally and as i have said before this is the only practice to be here in spite of having a restless mind which is pulling you and because he knows you so well he knows your weaknesses he knows your old habits and he's trying to pull you there's lot of attraction in maya this illusion which we call world it has so much of attraction and this is the play of god given so many attractions enjoyments pleasures that you stay like an ego always greedy for more but never satisfied never contented no one in the world has ever achieved the blissful self along with their ego along with their personality along with as a person a person has never ever achieved it because that person is the obstacle when we talk about mind and we blame mind there's no mind except our interest in the worldly affairs so many times it happens when we are doing a real satsang with people together as soon as the satsang the discourse finishes people start talking so much of stupidity they can't keep quiet they don't talk from here they slip back into the ego so quickly and then this ego bites them it only needs your practice watch everything as as impersonal pure awareness not the person you should not be bothered about this person that you don't even recognize your name properly nothing happens to you if someone calls your name you don't feel if someone is saying good or bad about this body mind complex you have least concern about what your public image is how people perceive you whether they like you or not your connection with the people around you will dramatically change the relationship will be not the ego relationships which we carry but from your heart and you might not reflect in your gestures but that love from the heart will speak in silence
if you stay as pure awareness uninvolved in all the actions of the body mind good or bad not even judging them just watching them you will be free in no time what is this freedom what you will be free free that you are this body mind complex this is the bondage because we have two modes of operation one you can always be speaking on behalf of the body mind as an ego ego whose purpose is to serve this body mind it is the reflected consciousness which thinks it is the body mind but when you know you are not the body mind you are not the ego you are the pure eternal awareness which is just a guest in this body mind if it has concerns it is concerned with everything in this whole universe all these images is part of this pure awareness it's not giving any importance to the body mind from which it is speaking it has no core group of people or people whom this awareness hate it cannot even if it wants it cannot it is like sun sun shines on everything whether it's a rose whether it's a weed whether it's a rich man or a poor man whether it's a beautiful river or whether it's a, just a mud pool it never discriminates this is the nature of pure awareness when you stay there the person will disappear the personality will disappear all the stuff which was coming from the ego mind body complex will completely disappear it can be a slow process it might take maybe hours weeks months it depends how much you are still attached to things and gradual and slow unfolding is beautiful just like a small bud opening slowly and becoming a flower it's your flowering blossoming and have patience one of the indian sage kabir used to say that you have put a seed now you are putting 100 pots of water every day that is not going to blossom it it will take its own time it will sprout just wait and how to wait just stay uninvolved witness this is the most authentic place when we stay here when our attention is on pure awareness this power of awareness brahman it does everything for us we don't have to anything no action is needed and no action can liberate us all the actions we do prepare us to be in this knowledge 
to pay attention to the pure awareness and just by looking towards this awareness it does the job and how it does the job now our interest is in impersonal pure awareness and no interest in the body mind complex when there is no interest there what will happen the ego dissolves because there is no work for the ego you have cut the relationship with the ego in the spiritual literature they talk about hriday granthi the knot in the heart which binds us with the body mind it loosens up it breaks up and this this the knot which breaks it's permanent it's eternal freedom and now what happens the body mind complex will continue doing what its predestined what its destiny is because of the momentum of what we have done before but that don't affect you at all because you are established in yourself you are the witness of everything keep practicing to pay attention to the pure awareness the silence within let what body and mind is doing is none of your business what is happening to others what is happening in the world let the world resolve itself you have so much of limited time on this earth let's sort out this first whether you are part of this earth or you are just a visitor don't invest in your stories story of the body mind complex when you have no interest in your own story how come you will be interested in others stories which is mere gossips all what we talk in this world are talk of a mad person doesn't carry any meaning don't run after anyone and don't hate anyone stay in this neutral gear
we don't have to criticize anything, anyone, any belief system. Be empty, empty of everything. Stay in your emptiness. Don't make this practice as a ritual. Don't start thinking from the mind, nothing is happening, what I'm gaining, how long I need to do it. All these doubts are obstacles to your freedom. Whatever thought is coming to the mind, don't judge it. Don't choose and pick your thoughts, trying to reject, suppress, control or getting involved. As presence, treat all of them equally. Ignore them. And if you have attachments, just watch that attachment with awareness. This might be because of some attachment to those things or people. But just paying your attention to thoughts and they grip on you, we loosen the grip. The whole process of being alert, being vigilant, not paranoid, but just be vigilant what is going in, what is coming out, where we have put our money, what we are attracted to, what we are not attracted to. A simple task like driving your car, People moving on the streets, things coming, signboards, signpost, buildings. Where your attention is going, what type of people or the buildings or the plants, what is irritating you, What is where is your attraction? Paying attention will dissolve all these attractions. Just paying attention to where the mind is moving, where your attention is going. 
it will bring into this neutral impersonal presence. So you're driving your car and the mind is restless and let's say it sees an attractive lady or attractive man and the attention goes, just watch it. If it is happening, just watch it. Then it is going here, just watch it. Then it's seeing a shop, just watch it. Just watching your attention Attention, staying in awareness and watching where the mind is going will shy away your mind. In no time, it will keep getting quieter and quieter. What mind is doing? Mind is insentient. It is your interest in so many things, thousands of things that your mind is projecting and showing, do you want this, do you want this? <coughs> Look now, this is coming in your image. It is like a video game. You know the video game kids play? There are so many things happening. You have to buy things, you have to do some transactions. <coughs> you have to build a house. You think this is, this actually is exactly a video game, this whole world. Things are coming in our images because of our own interest. It is exactly like if you are watching something on YouTube and then the new tube, YouTube pops up another video that you might be interested in because it tries to look what you are interested in. Same is like mind. It just gives us what we are interested. If we have no interest, then what will happen? You are not giving any work to mind. I'll give you another example. You know on the path of Bhakti Yoga, path of devotion, devotion to God, where they start with dualistic, almost all of them see the God what they want to see. Whatever God they believe, they see Him in front. He talks to them, they have food with Him, or whatever. They are blessed with the same God what they believe in, how it happens. Because that is the only task they have given to the mind. That whatever, whoever is my God, should I, can I see that God? And then they have those things. Don't give any work to the mind. But because you have already given so many files to the mind, what will happen? It will keep showing you. You have to tolerate because you have given all that stuff to the mind. Otherwise, mind has no independent existence. Let's say from your computer you have given command to print some stuff. You have given command, it's just printing and printing and printing and sometimes you have given a wrong command and this command and that, it's just printing and there is no pause button in this game. It will print, let it print. But don't give more printing commands, that's all. Don't be interested more, just stop here, don't be. Just And how to stop is to be in the awareness, just pay attention to things happening. Give away your doership. Already you have done so much of work. Don't worry. Don't do too much of work now. Don't do any work. Work means things will be happening. You can just be staying as an awareness. All works, big or small, do as non-doer. Don't give more command to the mind. No interest in any worldly activities. Otherwise the mind will keep ticking. 
in whatever garbage we have already given to the mind it will produce all those sorts of thoughts and images in front of us all the situation which we are have around us is created by us only if it is good even then it is our creation if it is mess it is our creation we have to deal with this situation right now and believe me whatever situation all of us are staying in right now is the most conducive situation for us to liberate that is the infinite compassion of the supreme he does not sabotage our freedom he wants all of us to be free he is on our side but we are on the other side this is the problem he has taken our side and we have taken the devil side who is devil in us this mind and what is mind attraction to the world and what is world all these illusory things you see all the time and you get attracted to it whether it's a food thing whether it's an object whether it's a person whether it's your mind game to get more name fame money whatever it could be each to his own whom to blame your interest and how to liberate disinterested and where to put your money now in the pure self so you have to change your interest habit from running after things to just be a witness to things and not giving more work to the mind how long it takes to liberate the amount of work you have already given to the mind and if you are still giving to the mind when will the practice end when all what you have given is empty and you are not giving more work to the mind giving work to the mind is your interest and your intentions not actually what things are happening in our life things will still happen the sages don't die they are still in the body mind they do things or things are happening around them but there is no doership in it there is no doer things are just happening if you see any sage any liberated person which takes credit of what he is doing that means he is still bonded he is still in bondage but somehow this divinity tries to give a liberated being something beautiful something pure somehow it happens why it happens maybe that supreme wants to make that body mind its own vehicle for others to come to that and get liberated who knows this god is on your side god has given your situation what you are dealing with right now is the most conducive most helpful situation for you to get liberated use it wisely whatever you have to do whether journaling contemplation inquiry just look around you sometimes people are unhappy with you maybe we have created that type of thing so don't blame anyone for anything 
no credit or discredit to anyone around us because our situation is unique you can't even share with your brother sister partner husband parents no one it is your own unique situation created by your own ego and to get out of this situation just watch abide in your pure silence of pure awareness watching the mind acting and feeling and thoughts coming and your attractions and repulsions and your hate and your love watch all this drama from a distance and this is the power of pure witness slowly the dust will settle even the images the people things which bother you of which you are so much attracted to they will just slowly disappear or move away the life around you will move away once you have learned the lessons and inside there will be nothing but emptiness nothing at all you will never get any calls from people also people will stop inviting you so many things which were so pressing and demanding in your life which you thought i have to do will dissolve somewhere you will be in this solitude all the time enjoying your own bliss though this is not your aim but this will happen as a gift to not touch anything in this illusory world and just stay quiet it's a prasadam it is the gift of god that this unending joy the blissful fountain will open up in your heart the only thing left in you would be compassion and finite compassion for all the beings who are still in grip of ego and probably more love for people who are trying to be out at least you can help them but then there will be so many ignorant fools around you who thinks they are having a good and happy life and they are enjoying the life and though they know everything don't worry about them send blessings to them also but first thing first you have to establish in your own self pay respect to the pure awareness the pure seeing which is uninvolved if you find difficulty in finding this pure awareness within remember anything which is still interested in the body mind is not you anything which is judging is not you anything which is having likes and dislikes is not you the one who is pure witness non judgmental non critical have no likes or dislikes does not need any support from any one of any sort in this whole world is you and from here 
you don't need anything from anyone in this world and you don't need anything even from god if you believe in a god and the only thing is your love to everything so only giving no taking when all the plans to fool people around you have ended because that's the job of the ego to find the people who can help us to satisfy our desires our ambitions and do flattery try to please people who are in power to help us to achieve some goals staying in pure awareness all the things which a man does to be happy as a worldly man is to is to satisfy the body mind by some pleasures isn't it pleasures of senses pleasures of body whole of this life what we do we try to pamper this body mind and then what happens the one which we are pampering dissolves dies suffers and that is the suffering because we have put all our interest in this body mind which is transient and we are not putting any interest in thing which is eternal which we are part of that ultimate supreme and then we lead a miserable life and we suffer and we die break your bond with the body mind and you're already that pure self you are this formless awareness without any name you are never born and you will never die silence is your language all the contentment peace comes in the silence the silence is complete we don't need anything from the world to make it complete and anything from you if taken out will not make it incomplete it is always complete always contented and happy nothing makes it restless nothing makes it angry you live in god's will
when you obey God's will, when you're happy in God's will. <clears throat> All suffering comes when the will of the ego and the will of the God doesn't match. But when the ego dissolves, whatever is happening in life, we realize this truth is God's will. And the God is you without ego. So it is actually your own will, the real will. Not the will which was serving the purpose of only one body-mind complex. If everything is happening according to your own will, then who can make you unhappy? Then what else mind has to do? You are this pure self. Everything around us is happening as it should be. We are as pure awareness, always contented and happy with it. 